everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joanna G. Holden and I am a Christian author of fantasy as well as an author tuber here on YouTube. And today, the video I'm going to be presenting you with is something I have been excited about to do for a long time and that is sharing with you my current pre-writing process. Couple quick notes about this video. First off, I am recovering from a head cold, so if I sound a little nasally, I apologize about that. Um, but secondly, I am not going to be editing this video unless absolutely necessary. Um, I'm sure you all noticed in my last video, the audio was completely misaligned for like the second half of the video, and I still don't know why. I don't know what went wrong. I did everything that I the same way that I've done with all my other videos, but somehow between my computer and my editing software not talking to each other, and YouTube just and my computer not liking each other. Uh, basically, my computer has issues, and I'm probably going to re-upload that video at some point to fix that, but for this video and potentially probably most videos in the near future, um, I'm going to try and get through the entire bunch of material that I have to share in one sitting. Um, and not have to chop it up and like scrunch it all up together. So yes, bear with me. I will probably be looking down at notes. Uh, I may have to sit for a minute and think about things if I'm trying to come up with wording correctly. Um, but yeah, see, I just said, um, I'm going to see, um, a lot too. So just that out of the way, just know that I'm not going to probably edit most of this video just because, just because my computer doesn't like me. So I hope you enjoy this material anyway, and let's get started into my current pre-writing process. Okay, so two things to say before we get into the actual material that will affect, um, that affect my process. The first is that I am what we would call in the writing community a planter. Um, a plotter is someone who sticks rigorously to a very detailed outline, has to know every single detail in advance before ever touching the first draft. A pantser is someone who, they know kind of what they want, but a lot of times for them knowing the end of the story before writing it, it destroys the whole creative process for them. So they like to not know as much going in. They usually don't do outlining. They usually don't do a whole lot of world building. They usually just kind of start writing by the seat of their pants, hence the name. But many of us authors kind of fall in between, and um, I think NaNoWriMo were the people that uh, coined the term planter. I'm an in-between, so I do I do make an outline. I have to know where my story is going. I have to know most of the details, but I'm also not afraid to stray from my outline, and particularly with characters or with a plot point, if I feel the story is deviating from the outline, and if I feel like um, I have a sudden burst of inspiration for something completely new and different, I'm not afraid to follow it. And yeah, a lot of times I change my outline as I write. So I'm kind of in between the two. That affects my pre-writing process a little bit. Um, also, I write mostly fantasy. Pretty much right now I write 100% fantasy. So there are a couple of extra steps um, that I include that you might not have to use if you're not writing fantasy. I also write pretty much only in series. So again, a couple extra steps that many of you might not need. But hopefully this process, um, or at least showing you my process, will give you some ideas. Maybe inspire you to try something new, give you some new ideas, or even just encourage you to sitting down and watching someone else share their process and, you know, the whole writerly life. So let's dive in because I'm already at 3 minutes and 46 seconds and I'm not allowed to edit. So <laughs> here we go. Okay. So step one, and I'm going to make sure I look at my points so I don't have to edit it. Step one is I collect all of my tools that I will need to plan out my novel in advance. So some of the things that I include, of course, it, for the most part, goes back to my laptop, that computer that I don't like right now. Um, all of my material is going to be on there at some point. I keep all my blank forms, my checklists, my questionnaires, my... Um, my research articles, most of that's on the computer, so I do, like, I have that handy at all times, of course. Um, but I do like to print things off, like forms and things, and fill them out by hand. I've, um, I've been trying to get away from the screen as much as possible lately, and I also find that writing things by hand slows it down enough to where um, it forces me to think things through a little bit more. So for that purpose, I, of course, have my handy-dandy colored pens, and these actually come in handy for more than just being pretty, as you will see in a little bit. Um, I also, and I have this partially for y'all's benefit here today too, but I have a writing resource notebook where it's basically a binder where I keep all of my 
forms and lists and questionnaires I talked about in a hard copy. So that if I lose it on the computer, I have it somewhere and I can just make copies of it so that it's a whole lot easier. Uh, a lot of things that I use, I also use um, some of the workbooks. Um, I also will pick up a spiral bound notebook. A spiral bound is very important because I tend to scribble and change things so it needs to be easy to tear out. And I got this one for my fairy tales because it's sparkly and glittery and fun and I don't know, the colors just kind of reminded me of fairy tales. So, but I do try to make it fun if possible. And I have this for taking notes as well. Again, writing by hand helps. I also will have on hand almost always the series notebook or series bible or series encyclopedia, whatever you want to call it. Like here I have my fairy tale when it's getting so thick right now. But that's where I have all my series information, which will be very important as I move forward into planning each individual book. And last but not least, if I have any, re any source material or if I have an original version or versions of this book, I'm going to print those out, pull those out, get them ready to sit down next to them and look over the information. So for the fairy tales, because you know they're public domain and stuff, I would print off the most original version of the fairy tale that I can find online, and I will have a copy of it in that book section in my series binder, and I will pull that out during this whole process. Um, I, for like the Cosunder book, I had a couple of like first chapters of a variety of versions of the story, and I would pull those out as well. So I always keep those on hand. Okay. I am looking down my notes again. I'm sorry. I'm trying really hard not to. All right. Um, the second, the second thing that I do is I take said spiral bound notebook and series binder, and I start working on the book basics. I start trying to figure out what all the book is about. So I'm going to pull out what I have here for one of my fairy tales. Hopefully you can't see it. I don't think. Well, you can kind of see it, but um, I'm going to cover up the title. But I have a page where I list out a whole bunch of different things and um, it starts with things like your working title. Um, for this particular project it's which fairy tale it is or you might say you know uh, what combination of your stories it is or maybe classic books it is. The genre and subgenre that I've chosen, the target audience, you know is it YA, is it middle grade, is it general fiction. Um, the word count goal which for me is usually on the higher range. Uh, an approximate number of chapters, which I don't fill out right away, and then two things that I definitely don't fill out right away are the one-line synopsis, which I think this is part of the snowball outlining method, where you try to boil down your story to 16 words or less, um, which to me is very hard. I usually end up closer to 20, but if you can get it down, it basically draws out the bare essentials of what your story is about, which to me is incredibly helpful to keep me on track. And then the back of book blurb, which is basically just a summary of the book in a couple of paragraphs that's more like you would read in the back of a book. It's very, um, very exciting to me and it gets me uh, ready to write the book. The next thing that I will have on here is an estimated release date, which again, I don't always fill out. And I will include the character roster, which I can't I'm going to show you like all of it, but I have a character roster um, of all the characters from that story um, in order of significance to the story. Now, if I'm getting really excited and I'm really getting into it, I will put a number of asterisks after or before their name, um, like starting from 20 and then working my way down to 1 to show how, how much they show up in the story. Not necessarily the significance to the plot, but how much they're in the story. So I have a better idea of like what characters I might need to cut or that I, that I need to have show up more. That will oftentimes come in more to play during editing, but I start with one so that I have something to work with later. And then I do have, um, if I have some ideas for my story, I just go ahead and write them down. Not necessarily in this notebook, but or on note cards. Um, usually I'll just write them down on random pieces of paper and they'll end up in my series binder or my book binder. So that is the basics that I start with on step two. Then in step three, I get serious about my world building. Again, fantasy thing, um, and I haven't had to do this quite as much for my fairy tales, so this part was kind of shrunk down for that project, but for books like Coastlander and a couple of other big saga-style series that I'm working on, it's very essential because it affects everything. So I do, I, I get really serious about my world building, and I go through, eventually I will have this world building workbook 
available and the series on videos we finished, but I have most of it in here right now. I have all the research that I've done and all the stuff that I've been working on. It's in here now too. Just not all of it has been condensed. So I will be going through, and again, the five basic categories that I use in that. Um, my geography, so like maps and topography, um, and then my magic system, and then the races and creatures, the history of the world and the places and the peoples, and the individual cultures of each nation or race or whatever. So I, I do all of my world building. I get that done as quickly as possible and as, with as much detail as possible before heading into step four. I'm trying to make sure I can see. But step four, which is characters. Now, I go ham on my characters. I really dig in deep with these guys because I want to make sure, I mean, they're what my story is about. They're who we came to see. We came to see that hero and that villain show off at the end. And I want to see that. Not show off, have a showdown. There we go. But I came to see that. So the first person, of course, that I work on is my protagonist, but the villain comes right up there with them, and I try to make the villains as detailed as the protagonist. So things that I do for each um, for each character, and I have them right here. I want to make sure I had a solid copy to show you. I have a basic blank character profile that is mostly for like their name and occupation, and then a very detailed description of their physical features. Um, if they have a magical ability, listing it so I know what it is. And then, of course, if they have a, any features specific to their fantasy race or if they're part of a fantasy race, noting that as well. Then I have a set of papers that are what I call Digging In Deeper, which is asking questions about their voice, asking about their backstory, asking about their main arc, and then inner um, conflict, stakes, unique points about that character. There's a lot of questions here that I answer. And those ones are only for the villain, the protagonist, and any other point of view characters. Then I also will use, and I got these off of heartbreathings.com. Um, Sarah Cannon does these. They are amazing. This was the first time that I had heard about goal, motivation, and conflict. I always include those now. And she, oh, I don't want you to see the name. But she has an inner journey sheet that I find highly helpful. And then um, the Deborah Dixon goal, motivation, conflict chart that I do as well, um, which again, and this, this set of papers I do for all of my, um, more important characters, um, and then if I have villains, and let me show you, because I do have, an, oh, I can't show you because it has names, okay, so basically I take a piece of paper, I draw however many lines for however many villains I have in my story, because usually I have multiples, and like the, the, the goals and motivations and stuff are overlapping, but I will write down a list of each villain's schemes, like what their what their goal is in this book, how it plays out, and usually it comes out in the form of goal, motivation, and conflict, but really it's what their plan is to take down the nation or to take down the individual bad or good guy or whatever that is, and then how they intersect with each other, because that is very important to me to know how my how my villains work together. And then step five, last, at the end of everything else, I finally get onto my plot. Now, just because I do have a pantser side and sometimes I embrace it, um, I still usually work best if I plot out most of my novel beforehand and pretty detailedly too. Um, like not pages upon pages upon pages upon pages, but I do have a semi-detailed layout of my scene. Okay, to start off the plotting process, <coughs> excuse me, I have Sarah Cannon from Art Breathings, her plot workbook. And she does what I've been doing for years, and I thought was really cool that someone else actually did it. She takes a giant chunk out of the middle of the three-act structure, so the act two, and she cuts it in half right at the midpoint. Because, I mean, books have a midpoint. It's easier for me to see it in full quarters instead of in thirds that are not quite even. So she put down her version of plot beats in each of the segments, and they're very general. And I kind of just put down the basic plot beats at that point, like what happens in the story so that I can see it like this. Once I have filled this out, then I will take my own printed off version. I've just printed off a list, <coughs> excuse me, of all of the plot points and plot beats that are used in the Save the Cat novel writing book and the um, Superstructure book by James Scott Bell. And with that beats sheet, I will create a scene by scene outline. You can see the beat scene outline. And I like, again, writing this down by hand because it helps me a lot just to be able to visualize it. Um, and I actually would like to show you, this is where those colored pens come in handy. Um, nine times out of ten, my story ends up being multi-POV, especially with the fairy tales. I wanted to dig into some of the other characters besides the protagonist. 
So I'm going to try and hold this where you can't see the wording. So you can see all this is purple. So I picked purple for my main protagonist in this one. But then as you can see, I added an additional point of view. And you can see it's different colors. So I don't know if you actually can see that. Uh, but there's green for the love interest slash other main character. Because there's a fairy tale, so of course there's a romance. So um, I will write up a list, a detailed outline of each scene. And then after that is finished, I will go back through and kind of do a guesstimate of about how many chapters I think it will end up being. And I will put that in that section at the beginning that asks for an approximate number of chapters. And it's also usually at that point that I can look and say, okay, about how long do I want this to be? And then give each scene a number of about how many words I think that scene will end up being. Tally it up, see how many words I'm actually going to be looking at. Um, so, for instance, um, one of the YA novels that I'm working on, The Fairy Tales, it was originally written up as like 50 to 60,000 words. And I think when I finished um, calculating up how many words I thought it was going to be based on how many scenes there were and how many words I was guessing from previous experience each scene was going to be, it was closer to like 75,000 words to 80,000 words. So. You know, you, you can, I can always go back and edit things, so I'm not really too worried about that. But that's what I do. So that's, at the end of the scene-by-scene scene outline, usually I know what I'm doing, and I'm ready to go. And I should add that when I do the scene-by-scene scene outline, I include, after I've finished writing the scene-by-scene scene outline, I go back with another colored pen to help me to see it better. Um, and I will write at the beginning of each scene, or over a number of scenes, which plot beat that is. And again, um, I'm not trying to follow a formula. I'm not trying to, you know, make it a cliche cardboard cut. It just helps me to understand what purpose in the overall plot each scene serves so that they're not just wandering around endless quests for absolutely no reason. So, okay, that pretty much is it. That is the end of my pre-writing process. I really wish I could have done a more fun version of the video with, like, B-roll and stuff of me actually doing it. But also, I probably would not have been able to show too much of that because I don't want to give anything away. I have lots of awesome stories coming, and I want you guys to be able to read them and be surprised at the plot twist and not accidentally see them on my outline sheet. So that is all that I have for you today. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired you. Uh, if you are struggling through the pre-writing process, if it's a beast for you to conquer, then I just hope that this encouraged you, gave you some fresh ideas, some fresh perspective. And remember, every book is different. Every series is different. Every genre is different. And every writer is different. So there is no one size fits all. Um, this is what I am currently doing. It may change by the next book that I write. I doubt it will because I really like it. But, you know, maybe five years down the road it will change. And we just have to be open as writers to some change, to some flexibility, and just let ourselves embrace the journey that is writing. Um, if you like this video, please give it a like uh, down below and consider subscribing on your way out. I do post videos pretty much every Saturday, largely about fantasy writing and about writing series, but also just about writing in general and just the life of being a writer. I do some vlogs and things like that as well. Um, if you're interested, you can check me out on social media. I'm available largely on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I leave all the, all the, all the, this is where the editing comes in handy, just so you know. All the uh, links are in the description box below, as well as the link to my author website, where you can learn more about me as an author, the books that are coming, and some of the services that I provide as a writer. You know, I'm not a, I'm, I'm no longer a published author. I, I, I took down my book to refurbish it before putting it back up. Um, but I am a writer. I have been since I was six years old. I know the struggles of writers. So the things that I provide for writers are, are, are just things that I have found and discovered that I want to share. They're things that I think would be helpful. They were helpful to me, and I want to share them with you. It's things like um, some free workbooks, some free checklists, things of that nature. So, um, And I do offer like chapter first chapter critiques um, and outline critiques um, to help because I, um, I do love being able to be a critique partner for people. Um, so that's kind of what that is. It's, it's not like you know, anything big, but I hope that you will find it um, helpful if that's what you're looking for. You can find that on my website. So as always, have an amazing rest of the weekend writing, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!